Hello everyone, welcome back to this mini session on uh, control. What we have seen until now was a general setting how to formulate a control problem, an optimal control problem for dynamical systems. And what we saw is that we have some kind of loss function or an objective function and we have a dynamic constraint. Right? And so in a discrete time setting what we get is we get n of these constraints, meaning that in every time step well, the, the evolution of the system state is given by the dynamics. And then we finished last video with this rephrasing of my state into a very large vector of dimension lowercase n times capital N plus one, which is the number of time steps. So this became a very large vector. U became also a very large vector in the same uh, way. So m dimensional times n time steps because we only need zero to n minus one control inputs, whereas we have zero to capital N states. Okay, and so what this is going to be about and also the next two videos is the special case where the constraint is a linear dynamical system. Right? We finished with the reformulation of this loss function or objective function in terms of the large state and control vectors. Right? So this is the Q hat matrix was this Q matrix you know, stacked on the diagonal, these block diagonal matrix, the same for the R hat matrix, which made this a very nice quadratic form. Still, we were left with the constraint. And in the special case where this is a linear dynamical system, we can actually get rid of the constraint. And this is what this is going to be about. So, how do we do this? First step, we should ask ourselves, what are we really looking for here, right? What, what this problem says, minimize over x and u so that this cost function is minimized subject to the constraints. So what are we really looking for? What are we really after? And so if you look about it uh, in this form, then we say, okay, given the input, the state can be computed yeah, using the dynamical evolution law, which is the linear system in this case. So what we're really after is only the optimal input u. I'm going to give it a star, meaning that this is the optimal input. So the x is not really of interest to us. It, obviously it is of interest, but not in terms of how to select it. This will be determined once u is fixed. And so the task should be to get rid of x but obviously not entirely, well, we're still dealing with a dynamic system, but as the optimization variable. And so how can we do this? Um, for nonlinear systems this is a very hard problem. For linear systems we have the very comfortable situation that we know the rule and then we can try to use it recursively. Right? So we know that we have an initial state x at k equals zero. This is given our initial condition. And using this we can simply use the law to compute x1. Okay, so simply enough, x1 is given by a times x0 plus b times u0. Okay, so given a control and the initial state, this is easy enough to compute. Right? And now we can also use this to compute x2. In the same way, we can just proceed and say x2 is a times x1 plus b times u1. Okay. But what we can also do is we can see where x1 is now the system state, but we have computed it using the initial condition only. Okay. So I can simply insert this expression right here. So what I get is, oh excuse me, this should be an equal sign. This is equal to a times this expression. So what we get is a squared times x0 this is a times the first part, plus a times b times u0. Plus this um, term here, 
alpha plus b times u1. Okay, and so in the same fashion, we can simply proceed over and over again, right? If I do the same thing for x3, I don't know, I'm, I'm just, you know, this would be the rule, a times x2 plus b times u2, I can simply add for the x2 this expression. So what I will get is a to the power of 3 x0 plus a squared b u0 plus a b u1 plus b u2. Okay, and so you see it's easy enough to recursively insert this and independent of which time step I'm actually looking at, you see that the left-hand side is always a function of x0 and u. And here it's also a function of x0 and u1 and u0. And in the third case, same story, function of x0 and my past inputs. So you see, there is clearly a pattern here, and this pattern is something that we can actually exploit. So you see we get the a to the power of k, right, for the k step, um, times the initial condition, plus the sequence of a raised to lower powers than, than k, times b times past inputs, okay? And so what we can do is we can, uh, if you look a little while at the pattern, then what we will find is, exactly this. We have a to the power of k times x0 plus, and now we get the summation, i equals 0, uh, excuse me, equal 1 to k a raised to the power of k minus i times b times u i minus 1. Okay, so what you see, we start at a to the k minus 1, b u 0, so this would be the first time, and then as i increases, the power which we, with to which we raise a reduces until 0 in the end, which gives us at k minus 1, just b times u k minus 1. So you see that this is the sum that in the end stops with this term. Okay, and so what have we gained, right? What we see is the same story as before, xk is just a function of the initial state and my trajectory of past inputs, okay? And so what I can do now is I can reconsider this large vector x, you know, which consists of all states, and the control sequence, and what I get is zero, oh, let's make some more room, this is going to be a big matrix, x zero, and then maybe let's use a few of them, x one, x two, until x n maybe, so this is my big x vector, and now what I get is, I get a huge matrix. Times my past inputs. I'm going to fill these out in a second. U0, U1, until U n minus 1. Plus, and now another big vector, which I'm going to fill out as well, times x0. All right, so what do we have? You see, the first row is something that we can simply, um, well, we use this recursion, but for the first one, we don't actually need it. x0 is just given by the initial state, okay? So it's the identity matrix times the initial state, and I have a row of zeros here. So x0 is simply x0, my initial condition. I have not used the, the rectangular brackets here, which I could, because we say, well, this is fixed. It, it's given as 
you know, part of our problem formulation. All right, so what about x1? Well, we've seen this is the explicit formula, or we can use this recursion with k equal to 1, and we see it's a times x0 plus b times u0. So what we get is an A matrix here, A times x0 plus B times u0. Okay, so what we find is a B matrix here, and all the others are obviously also zero. Right? So this is how we do it. And now we can just proceed. Right? This one was a squared times x0 plus a b u0. So what we get is we get an a b here, which we're playing with the first one plus b u1. We get a b matrix here and zeros in the rest. Right? And so you see, in the same way we can simply proceed, and what we will get is, for the last one, we will get the entire pass sequence, right? With the b here, a b here, and we get this very nice block diagonal, or the, 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 these diagonal structures, where we end up with a to the k minus 1, excuse me, a to the n minus 1 for, for the last one, right? a to the n minus 1, b until a, b. Okay. So we get this very, very nice structure here, and here we will get a raised to the power of n. All right. So this is a rather lengthy derivation, but we actually gain quite a bit about this because what we see, if you look at this once more, this is our big x vector, right? We have n plus 1 times our state dimension small n. And this is now given by a big matrix that I'm going to give a new name, let's just call it g, times our input vector u, plus another big matrix, which I'm going to denote by h, times our initial condition x0. So what we get is, this is a, 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 a very large matrix, which is n plus 1, n by n plus 1, oh, excuse me, n plus, so just n times m. Right, so you multiply, you have n plus 1 times this block, and you multiply it you know, with these m uh, or n time steps of this m-dimensional control input. And this one is also very large, but it's more like a, a, still a matrix, but vector-like if you wish, because we have just width n to, uh, to multiply with the initial condition, but again, a large number of, of, of rows, which is n plus 1 time steps times the dimension n, and then n columns. So large matrices, but you see, out of this recursion, we simply get this formulation. And what we have gained now is that our optimization problem that we started with looks like this. Minimize, again, over x and u. This is the next thing we have to deal with. x transpose q hat x plus u transpose r hat u. Subject now a sort of algebraic condition, if you wish. Nothing has really changed. I've just relabeled things, right? And now this is going to be important. Let's call this the, or let's call this the G matrix times, I'm going to use color code for the control in the end, U plus H times X zero. Okay. And so this is now a problem that can be solved in a straightforward fashion, because we see we have a quadratic cost function and we have a linear constraint where nothing has changed. We have just rewritten it, but we have gotten rid of all the states here. It's just a function of the x0. So what's left is, and this is what we're going to cover in the next video, to simply get rid of the constraint by inserting this expression into the objective function. And this way we are going to be able to obtain a very nice closed form solution. So to find out how this goes, please uh, uh, continue with the next video. And there is uh, this, uh, this discussion where we will insert this and solve the problem 
in a very nice and close form way. So thanks for your attention and see you in the next video.